with just a 5 to 15 second recording of anyone speaking, you can now clone that voice and then use the voice with text-to-speech to sound like that very person. Unlike other methods, E2F5 does not require any training, and the quality sounds the best out of all free zero-shot tools that I tried. It also runs very fast on most supported hardware. And if you combine it with other open source AI tools, you can create some cool things like making anyone say anything on video or creating your own video podcast. You'll learn everything you need to know in the following tutorial by AI Voice Tutor. Today we will start by preparing the input voices that we want to clone. Before we will install and then use E2F5 TTS for the actual text-to-speech generation, using its features such as podcast generation and speaking in different emotions. Currently only English and Chinese are supported, but more on that later. At the end I will briefly show you how you can use Face Fusion 3 to lip sync videos to the voices. All tools should work on most hardware and you will need about 15 gigabytes of free disk space. To put things into perspective, when it comes to free open source AI voice generation, there are two main approaches. The first one is to use your own voice and convert that into the voice of someone else. The best tool for that is RVC V2. This requires the voices to be trained before they can be used, which can take a while, depending on your hardware. RVC also works in real time, which means that you can have some fun with your friends in apps that support voice calls such as Discord. The second technique is text-to-speech, and a tool called Turtoise TTS lets you generate some very high-quality AI voices. It automatically adjusts some values, and you can then click on Save Training Configuration. But just like RVC, you need to train the voice models before you can use them. E2F5, however, is zero-shot text-to-speech, which means it does not require any additional training. If you want to learn more about the other tools, then you can find the videos on my channel, or you check out my AI voice cloning playlist. E2F5 only needs 5 to 15 seconds of a voice. I downloaded a podcast. The big question for me in that timeline is, why didn't we do that? Below? But audiobooks or movies also work fine. To turn a video into a short audio clip, you can use many different tools, such as CapCut. But I prefer to use a free open source tool called Audacity. Just make sure to download the version without Muse Hub. And to use Audacity with video files, you need to go to the Preferences to download FFmpeg, and then Audacity should be able to locate it. Once you open an audio or video file, you can then highlight parts of the audio and either delete it by hitting backspace, or once you have about 10 seconds of one person speaking, then you can just export that highlighted portion as an MP3 file, if you set it to the current selection only. And while this one 10 second clip is enough, I suggest you cut multiple clips of the same speaker while you're at it. Just make sure that the files you cut are less than 15 seconds. In case they are longer, E2F5 will cut them off after 15 seconds. And if it cuts them off in the middle of a word, it can lead to unpredictable results. I don't think there's an ideal length for the audio files, as I have been getting great results with input files that were 6 seconds as well as with ones that were 15 seconds long. F5 TTS also supports voices with different emotions. Everybody's down on the floor and we in lockdown. So in case you do have a source of a speaker with different emotions, then it helps to name the files accordingly. In case there are any background noises in your audio files, you can use another open source tool called Ultimate Vocal Remover. By using the same settings as seen here, you can easily extract vocals from songs, but you can also get rid of background noises as can be heard here. Here is the original. Come here for a second. I said, yeah? He goes, your punches. And here are the vocals extracted with UVR. Come here for a second. I said, yeah? He goes, your punches. Keep in mind that having good and clean input audio clips can be crucial for achieving high quality generated audio. Next, we install or update Pinocchio. And we do that by running the latest installer from the website. Once done, you will find the list of installed apps here. And in the Discover tab, you will be able to locate E2F5 TTS. Installing takes just a few clicks. Once finished, it will launch the tool in a Pinocchio window. You can use it right there, or you can switch to run it in a web browser by clicking on this URL. By the way, if you want to update a tool within Pinocchio, then you need to stop it first, and then you can start the update. The user interface is pretty straightforward. 
you only need to load your input audio file, or as the tool calls it, reference audio. Then you enter the text you want to generate and hit synthesize. You can always monitor the detailed progress of what the tool is doing in the terminal window of Pinocchio. In a world where you can clone anyone's voice with just a 15 seconds audio sample, anything is possible. In case you forget to save the generated audio files in the UI, you can find all files spread across these subfolders in the cache folder of the tool. If you're not happy with the result, you have a few different options. You can just generate the audio again and it will be using a different seed, therefore sounding slightly differently. You can't manipulate the seed though, which makes comparisons a bit hard. You can also try using another input file, which sometimes can work wonders. Or you try to adjust the syntax of your text a bit, uh, misspell words on purpose, or rephrase some of the sentences. And even though the transcribing feature works quite well, in some cases it can go wrong. You can check what the tool has transcribed for the reference text in the Pinocchio terminal. Copy the text from the terminal and paste it in the field for the reference text. There you can edit it and correct any potential mistakes. E2 and F5 are two separate components combined in this tool, and in my opinion there's no need to use E2 since F5 is far superior. In a world where you can clone anyone's voice with just a 15 seconds audio sample, anything is possible. I do, however, highly suggest that you play around with the speed of the generated audio as it can have an impact on the quality of the output. And to me, it seems like some voices work better with a setting of 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. In a world where you can clone anyone's voice. In a world where you can clone anyone's voice. In a world where you can clone anyone's voice. But you should not increase or decrease it too much since at some point the output will become unusable and sometimes a bit scary. Where you can clone anyone's voice with just a 15 seconds of audio sample. <laughs> Anything is possible. If you think that was weird, then watch until the end of the video to hear what the 0 0.3 version sounds like. But be warned. Another cool feature is the ability to create a conversation between two people and you can either write your own podcast script or you can have an AI assist you with it. What's important is that each paragraph has the name of the speaker in front of it. In the E2F5 user interface, we enter the name of the first speaker and then point it to the input audio file. Again, you should enter the reference text in case the transcribing doesn't work or if you want to save some time, since for each of the paragraphs, the audio will be transcribed again. Do the same for speaker two, and then you can paste your podcast script in here. Decide whether you want to remove the silences or not, and then hit generate. The output will be one audio file that has the entire podcast or uh, conversation, and you will get to hear a portion of it in a bit when we lip sync it to video. But first we'll take a look at the multi-style function, which lets you generate text in different emotions. Just like the podcast function, you need to use a special syntax with the emotion being in front of the sentence in brackets. So just like with the normal mode, we upload our input audio for the regular emotion. And then we need to scroll down so we can add another speech type or emotion. And then we give it a name, and this is the same name that we will have to use in the text to trigger the emotion. Repeat these steps for all speech types you have, and afterwards enter the text you want to generate. For me, there was no noticeable difference with the silences removed, so maybe play around with that function yourself and hit generate. This is my regular way of speaking, neither too calm nor too excited, just normal. Sometimes though, I am very relaxed and calm, and I will not get worked up by anything or anyone. Some other times, however, I am very angry. And I feel like I will not calm down anytime soon. It doesn't take long, though, until I am so happy again that I could scream for joy. Even though it's not perfect, it shows the variation of a voice that you can achieve with different input audio files. Now let's look at how we can take the audio files we generated and turn them into a video with lip sync. For that, I prepared some short video clips of both speakers along with the generated audio clips of about the same length. Then we need to install Face Fusion 3 through Pinocchio the same way that we installed E2F5. After we run the tool, we enable the lip syncer and disable the face swapper, since we won't be swapping any faces today. 
You can also enable the face enhancer, but keep in mind that the order matters in which you activate the processors. The face enhancer is optional, and using it means the entire process will take about twice as long. But if you don't use it, the mouth and the entire face will be quite blurry in the output, as could be seen in this comparison. Then we enable the GPU and disable the CPU. Next, we select the source, which is our text-to-speech audio clip. Before, we then select the target video. And then click on Start. You can monitor the progress right here in the UI, or if you want a bit more detail, you can switch to the terminal window in Pinocchio. Here's a portion of the finished podcast that I stitched together along with some notes. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm joined by AI Voice Tutor. Tutor, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Lex. I'm excited, especially because we're talking about AI. So tell me, what's this about creating cat videos with spaghetti? It's all about open source AI. People can now create images or videos like a cat eating spaghetti in a fancy restaurant with just a few inputs. That's incredible. So anyone can just create these things at home, no animation studio required. It's easy and the results are amazing. Brilliant. AI powered cat content, it's the future Lex. Thanks for explaining all this. Now I've got ideas. Anytime, AI voice tutor. Looking forward to seeing those videos. And while the lip sync isn't perfect yet, just like with everything AI, it's only going to get better over time. And just like the generated audio from F5 isn't perfect either, I think it's very impressive and some of its issues can be fixed easily with a bit of audio editing afterwards. To me, it felt like it was easier to generate male voices that sounded good, but I'm not sure if that's due to the tool or maybe I just didn't have good input audio. Support for other languages is theoretically possible, but the requirements to train a model for another language are very high, as you need about 10,000 hours of voice data and a lot of GPU power. People are working on it, however, and I will make a video about it once there is support for more languages. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Before playing the weird audio file, I want to thank all of you and everyone who is contributing to the open source AI scene. I hope you learned something new while watching and I'll see you next time. In it all through the depths of the burnet caution, the cloven Voice with which the fittest uh, fixes uh, the Erkin's body is possible.